Welcome my friends to No Nonsense Metal Reviews. I'm George and I've got yet another instalment of underrated albums for you today. Albums that I feel just don't get nearly as much love as they deserve against maybe some of their bigger successes or the more commercially accessible albums. But today I'm talking about an album from 1975 the absolutely wonderful Fighting by Thin Lizzy, the rock and roll legends that they are. This album was the year before we had the two releases, Jailbreak, Johnny the Fox. Then, of course, later we had albums like Bad Reputation, Chinatown, Thunder and Lightning. And not to forget, of course, the great, one of the greatest live albums ever, Live and Dangerous. But this album, Fighting, in my opinion, this is the first album in which Thin Lizzy actually started to sound distinctly like Thin Lizzy. The Thin Lizzy that we know from Jailbreak, from Johnny the Fox, Bad Reputation, as a solid, hard rock, rock and roll institution. The, the great inspirations for the whole new wave of British heavy metal, the, the twin guitar work, this, of course, was the second album to feature the dual guitarists. We had Brian Robertson and Scott Gorham in the band. They first featured together on the previous album to this, Nightlife. But, in my opinion, Nightlife is just way too soft. Going back to the first two albums, the self-titled album, and then we had Shades of the Blue Orphanage. I, I, I have the albums in the collection. But I don't really need to hear those albums again. I've heard them a few times, but they're far more... It's, it's more like a... If you're not familiar, anyway, it's more like a, a folk, jazz, funk, pop rock thing. It, it's a whole different ball game altogether. It's a totally different entity. There are some good moments on those albums, respectively, absolutely. And, of course... I am not discrediting the importance of those albums, but Vagabonds of the Western World, the third album, had a lot more to it, had a lot more substance, and it had a lot more promise of heavier things to come. It was a point in the right direction, I mean, most notably for the track The Rocker, one of the great Thin Lizzy classics. A rock and roll track with plenty of attitude. Then we get to Nightlife, and things just sort of fell flat. For me, it's an album that's got a few good moments on, but overall it's just way too soft. Way too soft and just, I don't know, just not rocking enough. I want a bit more substance. And this album, in my opinion, is overlooked all too often because we get Jailbreak, we get Bad Reputation, Renegades, Chinatown. We get these far more successful albums, or also far more rock and roll albums. But Fighting is a really hard album to ignore, certainly. But it's a really rock and roll album. We get some great moments. We get that opening track there, uh, Rosaline. I mean, Rosalie is, it, yeah, it's, it's essentially just a rock and roll track, but it's got plenty of groove. It sounds like the sort of stuff that Kiss were doing at the time. You know, this is early 70s. This was this was rocking. It had some great uh, vocal work from the legendary Phil Linnett on vocals there. The guitar works great. It's It's got such soul and it's got plenty of groove. The second track, For Those Who Love To Live, that track deserves mention, if for nothing else. That absolutely wonderful, monstrous intro, that epic intro to the song, it sounds like it's going to kick off into being a massive rocker, but it's still a rock and roll track. We've got plenty of soul there. There's plenty of, there's plenty of great instrumental moments. It's a really good song. But by the time we get to the third track, Suicide, now that is an absolute monstrous rock and roll rocking track that is it's one of my favorite thin lizzy songs and it is so great it shows the promise of where they're going it's definitely you can you can hear that 
embryonic heavy metal sound with the twin guitars, the way they're working off each other, feeding off each other. The groove and the, the power in Phil's vocals is phenomenal. It absolutely fa just never fails to blow me away every time I put this album on. And this is an album that I frequently revisit. It's got so much to it, it really has. Killer riffs, you can hear, it's almost like, is that, is that embryonic maiden I can hear there? It's, it's, it's not a track to be ignored. Then we get uh, Wild One, much slower, slower pace, but it's really powerful stuff, such soul in Phil's vocals. He's come along by this point so far as a singer, as a front man. It's got great guitar work there. We've got epic melodies. It's a really, really good song. It's a good Thin Lizzy track. Plenty of substance, plenty of soul. Uh, fighting my way back. So much aggression. So much attitude. It's a really spiky, punky, rough and ready rock and roller. A really good song. Shows exactly where they're going. Things are turning heavier. The second half of the album is not as heavy as the first half. It's not as rocking. But we get some good tracks. We've got tracks like King's Revenge. Not a bad song at all. It's a rock and roller, but with a bit more of a folk angle, maybe a bit of a hangover from their earlier days. But it's still a really good song. Another good moment there. Uh, strange song, but it's definitely Thin Lizzy. Um, Spirit Slips Away, Silver Dollar, Freedom Song. Different elements there. Certainly Spirit Slips Away is more of a blues kind of jazz thing going on there, a bit of folk thrown in there. Again, it's a hangover from those earlier days, I should think. But they're not bad songs. I mean, Freedom Song is more of a slow burning rocker. But that closing track, Ballad of a Hard Man, a really good song. Another great rocker, phenomenal guitar work, an excellent way to close the album. As I say, the second half is not as strong as the first half, no, but King's Revenge and Ballad of a Hard Man, they definitely provide the rock, while the other three tracks there provide a little bit of something different. Thin Lizzy doing what they do, being experimental, being a bit different, but just for the first half of the album alone. Rosalie, for those who love to live, Suicide, Wild One, Fighting My Way Back, rocking classics, and they are really great, great tracks. If you're not familiar with this album, maybe you've only heard the likes of Jailbreak or Thunder and Lightning. This album, Fighting, 1975. Check it out. It is a great album. It's not one to be missed. Certainly if you like hard rock into that very early heavy metal style there, check this album out. You will not regret it. If you like hard rock, that is. Thin Lizzy, Fighting, an underrated album, in my opinion. What do you think? Are you familiar with this album? If not, check it out, and then let me know what you think. I'm very interested to hear. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. Very much appreciated. You take care, my friends, and check back soon for more reviews, more recommendations. Stay heavy.